I'm going to talk about the sharing economy and the future of work and its impact on our cities. And you know the sharing economy has arrived when, in full bloom when people talk about Airbnb and Uber and all the controversy around them with the same breathlessness that they once talked about Facebook. And when an entire conference, a two-day conference, is devoted to the impact of sharing, as happened in San Francisco last month. But my first point to you today is that when most people think about sharing, they think about sharing things, like a spare bedroom or a ride. Can you see that little mustache there? <laughs> But I would argue that the most exciting sharing opportunity that's upon us now is the one that we've barely begun to talk about. And it's not a thing. It's our skills, our talent, our knowledge, and our know-how, and the time that we have to share it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the talent sharing economy, how that leads into the future of work, and ultimately the impact that will have on our cities. And I'm going to start by saying that my first interaction with the talent sharing economy happened about two years ago when I was new at Odesk and we needed to revisit our brand. And many of you may know that in Silicon Valley, branding talent is really rare and it's really expensive and I was tearing out my hair trying to get this branding project off the ground. So in desperation, I logged on to Odesk, which has millions of talented freelancers and ran a search, and within minutes, look who I was astonished to find. In the hills of North Carolina, retired, and sharing his talent only a few hours a week, was the former senior creative director of one of the largest advertising agencies in the world. And by his own admission, he was sharing his talent in order to earn the money to indulge his grandchildren. He has 10 grandchildren. <laughs> so this man actually saved me. He worked for me from North Carolina for a few hours and gave me the skills I needed to get the work done. So the ability to share talent can apply to pretty much anyone with an internet connection and some skills. It can be the college student who has 10 spare hours a week who would like to run social media campaigns for a company. It could be a mobile programmer who likes to moonlight on the weekends, or even a mobile programmer who might have struck out on his or her own by choice, coding multiple apps from cafes and co-working spaces in areas urban, suburban, rural, or countryside, or even beachside from anywhere in the world. Now, all of this is changing the future of work and ultimately, that ripples down into our city. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to talk about five major disruptions. The first one is that corporate loyalty is dead. It used to be prized. But now, let me give you an example. A recent study of the millennials generation showed that 9 in 10 believe they will be at their next job for fewer than three years. That translates into 15 to 20 jobs over the course of their working lives. At the same time, think about this. If you're a business, it takes more than 30 days to fill a position. So imagine taking 30 days every two to three years to refill the exact same position. Now, all of that is changing. Today, the internet and collaboration tools make it a lot faster and easier for people and work to connect, work together, and disconnect with a lot of fluidity. Also, when the work starts to move online, it becomes a lot easier to measure results with a great deal of precision, work results. What that means for the workers of the future is there's a shift. It's now about employability, not about employment. What do I mean by that? Well, people in the future will be thinking more about income security and not job security because static roles are beginning to fade into the past. So people will be creating diversified income streams. I was just talking to someone who's in the back row here who was 
We were talking about this. Instead of uh, earning their living from just one job. And the mind will be shifting to a different set of questions. Instead of people asking themselves, what am I going to do for the next five to 10 years? What role am I going to have? They'll be asking themselves, what skills do I need to be successful? Am I at the top of my game in my field? Is the field itself shifting? And if so, what do I need to do to brush up? It's this concept of lifelong learning and advancement and morphing to be successful. Meanwhile, businesses will be thinking more like a Hollywood movie crew, thinking about the skills they need for the task at hand, how to assemble the talent, and how to assemble the talent for the ideal result. So that's number one. Now, disruption number two is the fact that social networks are not only changing how we relate to each other as friends and during fun times, they're also changing how we hire. In our connected world, as we all know, we're getting used to sharing a lot about ourselves, sharing things that would have been unimaginable even 10 years ago. And an entire generation has grown up pouring out their thoughts and their experiences onto this digital stage. Now think about how that affects the core of how we think about people that we don't know. Our mental models are shifting from don't talk to strangers to vet, connect, and trust. And a whole host of sites with social networking components let you learn a lot about people that you may want to work with before you even talk to them. I'm talking about sites like GitHub and Quora and blogs where you can get a sense of someone by how they write and, and the code they write and so on. There's also this notion with your social networks that you can oftentimes figure out who you know in common. So you can get color around a person's work, their strengths, their weaknesses, and their work styles. Traditional resumes are out and online profiles are in. And they can help match the right professional to the right job in record time. So not only do we now list the things that we've done in the past, but there's also this notion of an online portfolio and work samples so people can actually look at the work itself. Ratings and reviews capture past performance and skills tests help vet the right person for the right job and demonstrate who is at the top of their game. Disruption number three, actually, this is not the disruption itself. Here it is. The best talent is not necessarily within driving distance. This has always been true, actually. <laughs> What's new is the fact that we no longer need to be restricted by this outdated limitation. When this light bulb goes off, you can never go back, and here's what it is. As long as it's knowledge work, as long as it can be done on a computer, the talent can be anywhere, and you can connect to it in record time. At Elance Odesk, where I work, where millions of jobs are posted each year, when we fill a job, the average job is filled within three days, and 25% of the jobs are filled within 24 hours. That means people are finding each other literally overnight, working together, getting the job done, and disconnecting with a fluidity we have never seen before in human history, people who don't know each other. So how is this evolution of work changing the shape of our cities? Well, expect a future that looks like this. This is disruption number four. Businesses of one will be the new normal. By 2020, 40% of the workforce is expected to be independent. That means two in five people will be working for themselves. Think about that. Think about the implications of that. When people work for themselves, they tend to work a lot closer to home. You know, I don't know anyone who works for themselves and decides to have a one hour commute each way. <laughs> um, so, and think about how much of urban infrastructure is designed around this notion of getting from point A to point B. And what could be more repetitive than going from home to the office and back home five days a week? 
So the cities populated with solopreneurs will start to face new challenges. Instead of thinking about physical roads and bridges as much as they do, they'll start to have to think more about virtual roads and bridges. They'll be challenged to provide free or affordable internet access, high-speed internet access. They'll also have to start thinking when they're full of solopreneurs about how to make sure that, that what employers used to provide are now being provided. They need to, are going to need to get creative about things like benefits and retirement. They're also going to need to think about the structures. With so many people working as solopreneurs, they're going to need to start to provide um, inspiring co-working spaces where people can collaborate or at least feed energy, get energy from each other. Now, let's take the next step in imagining the cities of the future when we can carry our entire work lives in a laptop or on a tablet and where the people we want to collaborate with are literally a Skype video conference or a Google Hangout away. Disruption number five, and it's really, really profound. Think about this. And this really summarizes everything I've been saying. Work is no longer a place. When we can start to bring the work to the worker, rather than require the worker to go to the workplace, it actually has an impact on our cities. We talked so much earlier about where are we gonna put everyone. Well, let's think about that. First of all, expect to see fewer of these. Can you see these? <laughs> these are cubicles. And more of these, co-working spaces. Expect to see fewer of these kinds of high rises and more of these, people working their entire work life in front of them from wherever they are. Expect to see less of this. This is what I'm not going to miss. And more of this. And think about the reduction in carbon footprint and associated reduction in stress and cost that happens when you're working from home and not commuting. In fact, looking into the future, I'm not going to agree with all the concern about where we're going to put everyone. Because actually, I think 10 years from now, based on this talent sharing economy and this growing work from anywhere world, cities can start to lose their dominance and their relevance somewhat. The same hordes of people who, and we all have these images from history that used to flock into urban centers in search of work, can now start to have more choices. And this actually reduces pressure on rent and housing and urban infrastructure. These same people, some will choose to stay in the city, of course, but others might choose to work countryside. Or they may choose to work from the beach. Or they may even choose to join a growing group of online professionals that we call digital nomads. And we have some examples. <laughs> Thank you.